Nikki, you were bankrupt when you left the UN. After you left the UN, you became a military contractor. You actually started joining service on the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton is. And now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. Identity politics. This new religion that says your race, your gender, and your sexuality are your identity. It is anti-American. It is meritocratic, it's anti-meritocratic, and it is dividing this country to a breaking point. But it's even worse when Republicans try to play the same game. And Nikki Haley's campaign launch video sounded like a woke Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light ad talking about how she would kick in heels. At the first debate, she said that only a woman can get this job done. That's what she said. After the third debate, when I criticized Ronna McDaniel after five failed years of leadership of this party and criticized Nikki for her corrupt foreign dealings as a military contractor, she said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. This is the problem. Using identity politics more effectively than Kamala Harris is a form of intellectual fraud. And it actually needs to end. There's our donor puppet masters wielding their puppet right up here tonight. This is how this game is played. The puppet masters put up their puppet, and I reject the use of identity politics in this party. It has been a cancer coming from the left, and I'm sick and tired of the double standards the people of this country are too. Having two X chromosomes does not immunize okay, you from thank criticism. You, thank you. Foreign policy experience is not the same as foreign policy wisdom. I was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in Ukraine. Now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position, with the exceptions of Nikki Haley and Joe Biden, who still support this, what I believe is pointless war in Ukraine. And I think those with foreign policy experience, one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. And this is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no yeah. idea what the hell the names of those provinces yeah. are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters yeah. and our troops me, and our military equipment to go fight it. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy yeah. experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. And there's her puppet masters right there, the donors. The donors right there that are playing Enough. like the puppet okay, masters. Enough. First of all, Chris Christie also doesn't know what provinces in eastern Ukraine he actually wants us to fight for. Chris, your version of foreign policy experience was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. So do everybody a favor, just walk yourself off that stage, enjoy a nice meal, yeah. and get the hell out of this yeah, race. Uh, when it comes to Nikki, all three of them have been licking Donald Trump's boots for years for money and endorsements. <laughs> Ron DeSantis, you've been a great governor, but you would have never been one without actually begging Donald Trump for that endorsement. And you attacked him in your Nikki book Haley. a year ago. Same thing with Chris Christie as a lobbyist, begging them for COVID money for his special interests in New Jersey, prepping him for the debate last time around. The real enemy is not Donald Trump. It's not even Joe Biden. It is the deep state that at least Donald Trump attempted to take on. And if you want somebody who's going to speak truth to power, then vote for somebody who's going to speak the truth to you. Why am I the only person on the stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11? that the great replacement theory is not some grand right-wing conspiracy theory, but a basic statement of the Democratic Party's platform, that the 2020 election was indeed stolen by big tech, that the 2016 election, the one that Trump won for sure, was also one that was stolen from him by the national security establishment <laughs> okay. that actually Thank put you. up the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that they knew was false. There's a reason why I'm the only person That'll on the it, stage sir. who can Thank say you. these things. That's what it's going to take, not people who are licking his boots one time and now Monday okay. morning quarterback him and criticizing him when it's convenient. Transgenderism is a mental health disorder. We don't let you smoke a cigarette by the age of 18. We don't let you have an addictive drink of alcohol by the age of 21. 
And I just challenge Ron DeSantis to go one step further and support what I think is clearly within the authority to do using federal funds just like Reagan did in 84 for the Highway Act that said the minimum drinking age needs to be 21. We can do the same thing when it comes to banning genital mutilation or chemical castration. Okay. I know Ron's been okay. unclear about that on the federal Haley. level. I'm crystal clear. That's where I stand. Got and it. That's a mental health disorder. That's, that's where it. we need to be at. Go ahead. This climate change agenda that is shackling this country like a set of handcuffs. I said it at the first debate and I stand by it. The climate change agenda is a hoax because it has nothing to do with the climate. That's what we have to see. 98% reduction in the climate disaster related deaths in the last century. Eight times as many people are gonna die of cold temperatures this year than warm ones. Yet against that backdrop, there's an issue coming up in Iowa. It's core to Iowa farmers. I met Kim Junker, Kathy Stockdale, and other farmers who are about to have a carbon capture pipeline built across their land using eminent domain to do it. That's unconstitutional and it's wrong. And if you thought COVID was bad, what's coming with this climate agenda is far worse. We should not be bending the knee to this new religion. That is what it is. It is a substitute for a modern religion. We are flogging ourselves and losing our modern way of life, bowing to this new God okay. of climate, and that will end on my watch.